Hey friends, it's Jacqueline here. In today's video, I will be giving you my review, swatches, comparisons, and three eye looks using the brand new Five Colors Dior Eyeshadow Queens. But before we get started, and if you're new here, I hope that you will consider and subscribe to my channel, ring the post notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads, and come and follow me on my Instagram. And now if you wanna know more details about this new eyeshadow formulation from Dior, then just keep on watching. So I think we all have been waiting for Dior to drop their new eyeshadow queens and they finally did. They appear at Selfridges, the 12 of them, and no, you're thinking that I got the 12 of them? <laughs> I didn't, I only got three of them. I honestly wanted more, I wanted a couple more, but some of them, they were not yet available. Although it shows as available, they were not in stock. So I'm sure they will come in slowly but surely. And anyhow, I ended up getting three of them. So I'm gonna be reviewing them, giving you the swatches, giving you three looks, because I did a little poll on my Instagram. So if you're not following me there, you better do so. <laughs> so you don't miss on anything, all the news right there. But you all said that you didn't wanna see three different videos, but you wanted to see everything on one video with the three eyeshadow looks, so I have it right here. Now, each of these eyeshadow palettes, they cost $53, and they actually come with what I think it's a generous amount of product. It's seven grams. So if you think, for example, the new Chanel eyeshadow quads, the ones that I just reviewed, the Chanel Fall 2020 collection, those they come with two grams of product. I know, chunker, right? And then, for example, a quad from Charlotte Tilbury, it they come with about 4.2 grams of product, something around those lines. And so that's, I mean, that's why I said this seems to be a little bit more generous. Now these are queens, so there's five eyeshadows on each compact. Already friends, these palettes are made in France, as we all know by Dior, and they are called the Five Color Couture High Color Eyeshadow Wardrobe. So I got them in the shade 579 Jungle, which I'm honest with you, that one right there, I wasn't thinking to get, and I don't know, but the images at Selfridges, they were just so vivid, it looks so pretty, I said, you know, I think I wanna get it. All right, and then I also got 159 Plum Tool, and then A79 Rouge Trafalgar, Trafalgar. Okay, so that's that. Let me show you the boxes close and it is the typical very dark almost navy blue type of box with silver on the very top you find the name of the eyeshadow palette and then all the details are on the back there you go so these ones when i took them out of the box they didn't came with a typical velvet pouch as most of your eyeshadows they come with they just came kind of like naked <laughs> per se and they are a little bit bigger than the regular line so as you see this is all black it says Dior in the middle these have a shelf life of six months so that's something that kind of surprised me right there okay so I have here the shade 879 Rouge Trafalgar And this is just such a beautiful palette. You have just one shade of red, then it plays a little bit on the pink tones, a little bit on kind of this peachy shade, then you have a kind of like cooler tone brown, and then one that looks like a celestial shade. We will see in a minute. And we know that for this fall season, red is in fashion, reds and pinks, and we have seen it from Chanel, we're seeing that Tom Ford is bringing back one of his eyeshadow quads that, you know, was discontinued a long time ago, that is also red. Then we had had an overload of products from Parmagrat that they are on the red tones too, so we are gonna see a lot of reds. Okay, and then here it is the shade 579 Jungle.
And I think that this color right here, it was interesting to me because I see this shade right here is very interesting. It, it's kind of like between a very deep, deep gray with a hint of green. Then we have this green shade right here. I don't know, this is interesting. And then this shade right here is kind of like a rose gold. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm, I'm curious to try this one right here as well. And then the last one that I got is 159 Plum Tool. And you know that I absolutely love shades like these, a little bit on the cooler tone with a little bit of like a purple tone, but these are muted purple tones and this just looks so beautiful in person. And as far as the formulation goes, it looks kind of like a baked formula. Ooh, this is just so beautiful. And by the way, these palettes right here, they do have a really nice size mirror as well. I'm going really quick back to the weight of these new Queen's palettes. I do have right here, one of the latest palettes from the collection Color Games, which is the summer collection from Dior. I did a review on these, and this right here comes with five grams of product. So let me just put it side by side with one of the new ones. Here you go, seven grams right here, five grams right here. So you can tell right there that you're getting more product for the money that you're paying. Now that I got you closer, I'm gonna start with swatching each of the palettes. Out of the three palettes that I have, this is the only one that has a true matte shade right here. This is a satin matte, and then these ones right here are metallic shades. Okay, let's just start with this right here. This is Jungle. And okay, ooh, this feels nice and creamy. Wow, this shade right here looks pigmented, very much pigmented. Okay, let's go here. Nice. Now let's swatch Plum Tool. Very pretty, very soft. This is kind of like a matte satin shade feels so beautiful. Ooh, this shade right here, wow. It's a beautiful eggplant, plummy shade, gorgeous, okay. Ooh, this is so pretty. Now let's go for Rouge Trafalgar, and then here again, this is Satin, another Satin shade, Okay, this one is a celestial shade. This is so awesome. Okay. Now, the matte shades that you will find right here on this palette are, again, kind of like satin matte. Look at that red. Oof. That's something else right there. Okay. Okay, let's go with the Queen's Jungle. And then with my Sonia G Builder Pro Brush, I'm gonna go to this beautiful rose gold shade. And I'm just applying it right now on my mobile leaf. Sigma E27 brush, and I'm going into this middle shade. And I'm just gonna apply it on my outer third. I'm connecting with that gold shade. This is nicely pigmented and it's blended really well. It does have a brown undertone. So although it's cool, it's not, I mean, in the pan it appears kind of grayish. It's not that gray. It's more into the brown family. Now with the same brush, I'm gonna go to this deep shade right here and I'm gonna apply it on my outer V and I'm just gonna emphasize right here this shade. And the way that I'm applying it is kind of like a slanted from one side to the other, kind of creating a very, very big wing 
without being a precise win. A Smith 253 brush and let's go into this green metallic shade. When I say metallic they are not like super metallic and I'm gonna apply it right in the middle of my eyelid. Oh wow this is beautiful. You know that I'm not crazy about greens but this has it's kind of like a coin green. How is a coin green? Um, it has a gold undertone to it. You know what? It reminds me a little bit to the Dose of Color Francation palette, the one that it was made by Desi Perkins and Katie. You remember that green shade? That's that's what it's reminding me of. Synergy Flat Definer, and I'm gonna go to the matte shade. And this shade, I'm gonna take it on my lower lash line. I'm gonna also take it on my upper lash line. I'm intensifying a little bit more the shape that I created first. That shade is beautiful. Sigma E30 brush. I'm going to that lightest shade in the pan and I'm just gonna use it to highlight my inner corner. Okay, this has a beautiful payoff. Okay, I'm not gonna finish yet this look right here. I'm gonna put something on my waterline and maybe I will do just lashes because I'm doing, you know, three looks. And by the way, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I usually do not use primers when I'm doing my reviews and first impressions of eyeshadows so that I let the eyeshadow formula shine through and really show what is the payoff. So let's go first with this shade right here with my Sonia G Builder Pro. And I'm taking it on my mobile lid. And this is a very cool tone shade. Next, let's go with Refer 01 brush and the middle shade. And I'm gonna take this shade. Can you see the amount of pigment? There's a lot of pigment right here. Okay, I had just a little bit of fallout and I have to tap it. Just tap it a little more. And I'm just taking it on my outer V. And then with whatever is remaining, I'm just gonna take it a little bit over. These shadows, they have such a good amount of pigmentation. I'm surprised. I shouldn't say surprised, but you know, Dior, just as other luxury brands, usually their pigment, it's not a lot. They're just most a soft wash. These ones actually, they do have pigment. So far, to intensify it a little bit more the look, I'm gonna go with Sonia G Mini Booster and the deepest shade. Taking whatever is remaining on that brush and just taking it above the crease. Now let's take the applicator that comes with the pan and I'm gonna go to this metallic shade right here. And I'm gonna apply it right on the middle of my eyelid. This is a beautiful shade. It creates kind of like a focus effect on the eyelid without having to do a cut crease. You can also apply it with your finger or with a brush. And I'm sure if you wet it, it's gonna give you even a more impactful look. Okay, with the other side of the applicator, I'm gonna go to this whitish shade. Um, when I say whitish, it's because it's, it's white, but it's not like a super stark white. And I'm just applying it on my inner corner. And with whatever is remaining, I'm gonna put it on my brow bone. Sonia G Flat Definer, and let's go to the deepest shade. And I'm not having, I don't know if you see it from the pan, I'm not having a lot of fallout or, you know, a lot of kickback in the palette. And I'm just taking this shade on my lower lash line. And I'm gonna take it also on my upper lash line. Alrighty friends, so here are the two finished looks for each of these palettes. For Jungle, what I did is 
I took the shade right here and I just applied it just a little bit on my lower lash line, just a dash. And then for the other palette, which is called, sorry, I don't remember, Plum Tool 159, I grabbed the shade right here as well. And I did the same thing. I just placed just a little bit right here. And that was it. Okay, friends, let's move on and let's do a night look with this palette. Sonia G Builder Pro in this peachy pink shade. And I'm just gonna take it again all over my eyelid. It looks peachy pink, but it translates on the skin as a true, more pink shade. Sonia G Mini Booster, and let's go to this shade here. And I'm taking this shade on my outer third, and then I'm just giving some shape right here to this eye look. Whatever is remaining, I'm just taking it above my crease. BK Beauty 203 brush, and I'm gonna go to this middle red shade. I'm just taking it on my outer V close to my lash line and again taking it above little by little building up the intensity of this red eye look Sonia G flat definer and we go to the brown shade and then taking it right here by my upper lash line and I'm going to create a mini wing with that BK Beauty 204 brush and I'm going to this shade and I'm gonna put it on my lower lash line. Synergy Flat Definer and the brown shade. A Smith 253 brush and I'm gonna go to the Celestial shade. And I'm gonna apply it right on the middle of my eyelid. Okay, it doesn't show that much, so you can either use the applicators that the palette comes with or just use your all-included tool, <laughs> your finger. And I'm just gonna apply it right there in the middle. For my upper lash line, I'm gonna go into the Eye Pencil Psyche from Chanel. And this over here is from their Fall 2020 collection that I just reviewed a couple days ago. So I will leave it on the cards if you haven't watched it yet. And this eye pencil, I'm also taking it on my waterline. Rapper 03 brush. And I'm taking this shade on my inner corner and my brow bone. Alrighty, my friends, I'm done with this eye look. And what I will have to say right here about this palette, it is that, you know what? I really like the end result because it's not too red. It plays a little bit more with the pinks. And this brown shade right here is not really a brown shade. It does have a beautiful, very complex, deep, purple tone that it, I mean like it complements the entire look so much. Now obviously because I was trying to review all of these palettes for you, I wanted to try each of the eyeshadows on each of the compacts and I will have to say that I'm very happily impressed with the performance, the blendability. I mean most of the eyeshadows are more into kind of like that soft matte satin side so they are very easy to blend and very complimented for those of us that we have a little bit of like either hooded eyes or we have more of like mature eyelids or a lot of folds on our eyelids these type of shades complement so so well by the way i want to mention that i use on my upper what is it called a waterline <laughs> but on the upper side I actually tie line it with Wayne Goss Precious Opal Eyeliner. I will be leaving everything that I use today on my face on the description box below so you're able to see it. But yes, I'm, I'm actually very happy with my purchase. And then I'm sure you're wondering what's the difference between the two new Chanel eyeshadow quads. I have here Candour et Seduction. This one right here is more intense, definitely, than one from Chanel. And 
The other one is called Candour et Provocation, and I have it right here. Can I make a review? So this two right here, the color story, it's very, very similar. But this one right here is what I think the Chanel was lacking of on this particular quad. The variation of shades. A little bit, something a little bit lighter. You see, this one has something a little bit lighter and yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let me just give you some swatches right here so you can compare each of them. I'm gonna go with this right here and I'm gonna put it below. So I have Top, Dior, Down Chanel, Dior, Chanel, Chanel. And again, this is Candour et Provocation. So, okay, let's do Chanel down here. And then up here we go with Dior. And then going into this palette right here, which is Candour et Seduction. The only two shades that I can think they are comparable are this one right here from Chanel and then this one right here. Now they are two different formulas. The one from Chanel is a true metallic, I'm going to put it down, and then the one from Dior is like I say a celestial type of shade. And then going back again we go for the red from Chanel and then the red from Dior. So Chanel, I'm gonna put it down just to be consistent right here, and then Dior up. And then I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but the inspiration on each of these Queen's palettes from Dior, it is actually the middle shade. So the middle shade is the one that actually makes of the rest of the palette just cohesive. So this is the inspiration, and then all the other shades surrounds that shape and then as far as this palette right here i think out of the three this is the one that i like the most because how it suits my skin tone and my eyes all of them are beautiful but this one right here it's a little bit alike let me show you right here i'm looking to this side because i have them down here i think if we go to glamour muse from charlotte tilbury this one right here is really hard to find right now. I think they are discontinuing it, but I think that's kind of like the closest one. Different formulation though. I mean, from here, I, it will give you an alike look, but they are not exactly, exactly the same. Like even this tone right here is a little bit more pink. This has a white undertone. I think the two shades that are alike is this shade right here with this shade over here. So I have here the two from Dior and here are the ones from Charlotte Tilbury. So, I mean, there are some similarities right there, but again, not identical. And I mean, the other one that I was thinking right away, it's the one from Tom Ford. This is Daydream. I mean, we can see just a little bit of similarities. And then as far as Jungle does, this is a beautiful palette, very interesting color story. And you know what? It kind of reminds me a little bit to the Anastasia Subculture palette. I mean, I think you can see that grungy vibe right there, but in a very elegant way. I mean, we can see the rose gold in there, a little bit of the green, those kind of like um, very deep, the greenish grayish tones right here this taupey shade right there a little bit again more grungy more like for nighttime look also you can wear it for daytime i mean if you don't use the shade right here you know but this is more like full time i mean very interesting palette and another thing to note about this palette is the closure i really love the closure you just press it right here and then it leaves that with so I mean, it's so easy. <laughs> and I think that is very convenient. I don't like to, you know, dig in with my finger and then get all my nail polish ruined, who knows, or even my nails. And then as far as the formulation goes, I love the formula. I think it is very impressive. The mattes, they apply really well. There was not a lot of fallout. Most of the palettes, they have these 
satiny type of eyeshadows that they just blend so easy and they are very forgiving for those who we have hooded eyes, fall on our eyes, or if you have more of mature eyelids, they will work just fantastic. The only downside, I think, it is the lifetime of these eyeshadow palettes. It says on the Unicard that they last for six months. That's the shelf life right there. We all know, we all push our boundaries and we go ahead and use our eyeshadow palettes for longer than what we're supposed to do. But that's the only caveat right there. Other than that, I like it. I mean, I know they are on the expensive side, but you receive a lot of product. I mean, $53, seven grams, Charlotte Tilbury, they are also 53 or $54, something along those lines, and you get four grams. So we're talking about almost double for the same price. Just give it a thought to that. Okay, my friends, and I think this makes it for this video. I hope that you find it informative and helpful. I would love to know from you if you're planning to pick up any of these eyeshadow palettes or if you have already picked up one, which one have you gotten and what is your feedback about it? Let's start the conversation down below. And while you're at it, and if you haven't done so yet, I hope that you will consider and subscribe to my channel, ring that post notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads, and come and follow me on my Instagram. If you like this video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, also share with family and friends, and until the next time, I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.